it strikes without warning. Of ten men, we can expect five to get it. But we can't say who, or when, or why. When the war ended, Ansel Keys turned his scientific curiosity toward the new American plague, as he called it, coronary heart disease. The facts are simple. You know the chief killer of Americans is cardiovascular disease, disorders and degeneration of the heart and blood vessels. Here are vital statistics. They show that this problem here in America is the worst in the world. Keyes was particularly struck by reports of the number of seemingly healthy executive men who were dropping dead of heart attacks. Was it job stress, as some suggested, or could it be something else? While it was understood by the mid-1940s that blocked coronary arteries caused heart attacks, no one understood the cause of the artery-blocking deposits. Dr. Keyes proposed a study that would follow a large number of apparently healthy executives for many years, comparing the characteristics of those who had heart attacks along the way with those who didn't. It was the start of Key's search for what later would be called risk factors for heart disease. During annual visits to the Laboratory of Physiological Hygiene, the executives received thorough testing and examination, sometimes on equipment designed and built right in the laboratory. A general interview assessed the men's lifestyles and changing habits. Still like apples as much as ever? Haven't got one in your pocket, have you, Doctor? See you again next year. Next year. We hope. We nice hope. to see you again, Judge. Right. After 40 years of follow-up, 54 men out of 283 were still living. The most frequent cause of death, heart disease. The most common risk factor, smoking. Keyes identified blood pressure and blood cholesterol as other risk factors that affected either the heart attack rates or the longevity of the executives. But even before this study began providing answers, Ansel Keyes was thinking up more questions. This time, the research would be much larger in scope and objective. It was clear to Keyes that a need was growing for a long-term, cross-cultural comparison of populations. Laboratory, clinical, and epidemiological findings all seemed to be pointing in the same direction, the time was ripe for a systematic study. So Keyes prepared the design for an immense international collaboration, unlike any undertaken to date. He wrote the grants and lined up colleagues around the world to work with him. The project to study 12,000 healthy middle-aged men in seven countries began in 1958. The diet in the Mediterranean countries centered on fruits and vegetables, bread and pasta, and plenty of olive oil. Meats, fish, and dairy products were used as condiments rather than as the focus of the meal. Finland was chosen for its high butterfat diet, the highest saturated fat diet of any country at the time. The Finns, in fact, were known to spread butter on their cheese. The Japanese were chosen for their remarkably low saturated fat diet. For consistency across countries, all participants came from rural areas or small communities. They ranged from men living in two Japanese villages, to American and Italian railroad workers examined in railroad cars that served as field laboratories, to farmers and laborers in areas of Crete, Italy, Yugoslavia, and Finland. To standardize the findings, data from the seven countries were sent back to the laboratory in Minnesota for analysis. Every five years, Keyes tallied up the number of people who had heart disease or had died of it in each country. The differences were dramatic. Basically, there turned out to be from five to ten-fold differences in heart attack rate in men of this age between the Mediterranean Basin and Northern Europe. U.S. and Japan, with Japanese and the Greek Islanders having the lowest rates of all, uh, Finland and the United States having the highest, with 
parts of Yugoslavia, northern Italy, and Holland in between. The seventh country study demonstrated clearly the preventability of heart attacks. 